Welcome back, YouTubers, to yet another Q&A with us, the British Fist. Good chin. Try and do it backwards for a change. Uh, with Q&A 128, the video, the only video we ever seem to do now where we answer your questions. I am Mr. Parkin, and this guy sitting next to me is none other than, I don't know what he's building, but it's NJ. What's up? Building a what's up by the looks of it. Um, as I say in every Q&A, I know it wastes time, but I've got to say thank you very much for sending your questions in. Please be patient. We will get to them eventually as we just have pages and pages here to keep us going for... You know, we could probably do another 10 Q&As and still not uh, still not get through all the questions. You are damn right about that. And I would like to say it's a pleasure to answer your questions because even though we're not doing many to any other video throughout the week, we're glad that you participate to keep us going on YouTube through this Q&A. And I don't think these Q&As will stop because they're turning to be review ish kind of things as well as how we would have done something, which just makes it a lot more interesting. By the way, I made an error earlier. It's Q&A 228, so apologies for that. Uh, me and usually when it comes to numbers and maps, I'm pretty spot on, but this time I fucked up. But anyway, um, yeah, so like I said, thanks for sending in your questions. And, you know, even though that it's the, it's the only video we do, and I, I can imagine... Uh, you know, a lot of people, if the, you know, if we stop doing videos that you probably stop asking questions, but it's very nice that you keep continuing asking us questions so we can keep doing these uh, these Q&As. And if you have any questions about, you know, Raw or something like that, we will try and get to it later on. So if you want our opinions on anything in wrestling, just let us know here. It's probably going to be the best place to get it from us because we ain't going to be doing really any videos elsewhere unless you want to put one up, for example. All right, Ebro S. Have you been to any concerts before? How were they? I'm pretty sure you you go to a lot of concerts, don't you? It was mainly your brother's band, wasn't it? I can't remember what, what were they called again. Undercover. Undercover. I actually went to. I remember I went to oh. one of the uh, concerts um, they had in Peterborough. They're actually. They're actually. I mean, I know they're not formed anymore, but they're actually a pretty fucking good band and sung a lot of songs that I like and a couple of Green Day songs as well. And the lead singer, she was a pretty pretty damn good singer as well. But she she really knew how to work a crowd. When it comes to local bands, yes, undercover, but real big concerts. The only thing I've done is Summer Excess, which was loads of like, you had like Blue, Ronan Keating, and stuff like that. So it really weren't the biggest, C -list, loudest rock bands. C list done. celebrities. <laughs> Ronan Sorry, Keaton. Ronan Keaton and Blue. And <laughs> yeah, because you'll be watching this video. They yeah, will, Blue yes. are fucking D list. But they, as yeah. for the ones like Oasis and stuff like that, no. There's no been any proper rockish bands or pop bands. Well, to be honest with you, I didn't really get into Oasis until they actually broke up. So after they broke up, I got into them. So I never really had a chance to go. But I do watch. I watch a lot of concerts on YouTube from bands such as Oasis and you know Metallica and Megadeth and stuff like that. So I do watch concerts, I just haven't really been to one. I just don't really think it's my kind of atmosphere personally, but that's that's just me. I would like to go, like Download has always been sold out and great to go to, but yes, it's just the, that atmosphere is like camping and stuff, maybe not, but going to an actual concert, a possibility. John Lee, that name keeps cropping up on our Q&As. Who should become IC champion? I mean, I like. I mean, I think Ryback as the IC champion is a good start because uh, he is getting a bit over, and you know he has just come out from a bit of a lull period. It's about time he got pushed a little bit. I'm sorry, that just like King of the Ring, that Intercontinental is bad luck because Barrett, when he had it, nothing really came from it. Everyone who's held it for quite some time has not done much with it. Ryback's got it, and he was feuding with the Miz. Big Show was meant to be a threat, but that really didn't seem to really work. So I'm thinking Ryback might be okay with the belt, but I I just don't know who's going to be a good IC champion to bring credibility finally back, because we thought Dean Ambrose would. I, I'm, I, I just, right now, until the credibility actually stays where it should be, I, I don't know who I'd want as. So who should become IC champion? <sighs> Neville? <laughs> uh, this, it's so incredible. Like, we thought Daniel Bryan, yeah, but bad luck happened to him. That weren't really his fault. I think if it goes Ryback versus to whoever John Cena loses it to and they do that combined thing like we said in our last Q&A, the person I would like to hold both belts would be 
is the person with both belts to finally break the because of where he is, Kevin Owens. I was going to say Kevin Owens. Thank yeah. you. Um, do you think Rhino should be on the main roster? No, I think he's better off in NXT where he's going to be teaching the younger guys and the, 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 and helping them develop. So that's where I think he's better off in the company right now. Not on the main roster. I just, uh, it just, I don't really see the point in him just in being on the main roster. I just don't. I think most of veterans that are seeming to come back to the WWE, as much as we want to fill up the mid-card and stuff on the main roster, NXT is where we want these talent to look good, succeed, have good matches against classic wrestlers. So I think sticking to NXT, getting the best out of them, is the best place to be. Plus, I think it's got to the point now where... I don't think you need to necessarily be on the main roster because NXT and its own brand is quite popular in itself it amongst certain fans, more hardcore fans, you, you would say. So even though you're not really on the main roster, you're still getting a hell of a lot of exposure being on the WWE Network and being on NXT. True. And I think it's just more beneficial for them to try and help the future rather than try and be you know, doing it themselves at this point in time. People like Rhino, etc. Yes. Not that I have a problem with him. I just think that that's where someone like him... Is better off being. Uh, can any wrestling company compete with WWE? Yeah, Global Force Wrestling. Yeah, because they didn't have to comp any 80% of the fucking tickets, their latest show. No, is the answer to that. Why? How, no company can compete with WWE right now. They just have too, they're too much of a conglomerate. They've got all the market share. They've been around for, you know, really a real long time. They've developed a great brand, despite the fact that we think the product is pretty shit. The bottom line is they've developed such a good brand, and you know even people that hate WWE Network, WWE are still buying the network. I'm really struggling because I'm, I'm I was trying to compliment the other wrestling uh, ah. companies that are out there. We're not TNA Asylum, but none of them are ever going to do right enough to be up there with WWE. TNA Asylum, you'll probably go on their website later, and there'll probably be like a huge article on how TNA can compete with WWE, even though they're only drawing like two, three hundred thousand fucking viewers on Destination yeah. America. Exactly. When you only, when you draw a little bit more than ROH, you know, you're doing shit. Renegade Man 83. Who can and should beat Cena for the US Championship? Well, it should have been Kevin Owens. Right? Yes. It fucking happened, did it? The next best bet... I think, because he's not going to hold it much longer. I think John Cena's time is coming to an end. My time is now. And I'm not saying SummerSlam, because he's not going to lose to Rollins. And I'm not sure if which belt's going to be on the line, if unless both belts are going to be on the line. But there has been reports, correct me quickly, is that John Cena, because of his broken nose, may be missing SummerSlam. Oh boy. <laughs> but when he comes back and loses the belt, I would love to say even though it's not going to happen, Samoa Joe! That's not going to happen. I don't no. even think Samoa Joe will make it to the main roster, to that be honest. Which, which would be a shame. I don't know. I don't, think it's, I don't think it's a massive deal if he makes it to the main roster or not. I mean, he, but like I said, I think he's one of those wrestlers that's better off on the next tee. Cesaro's rematch? Cesaro wouldn't be a bad... But the thing is, he's, he's, already, he's, already, already, he's already been US champion and he was shit as a US champion. That's what I was saying to the Intercontinental as well. Mm. So at the minute... I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to continue holding it, mm. but I want someone to beat him off it, but I don't know who. I, mean, I think for, for now, Cena has to keep hold of it until you build someone up again, like a Kevin Owens, who could beat John Cena for it. It should have been Kevin Owens, definitely, but it should. WWE are fucking stupid. Name five wrestlers in WWE that are underrated and five wrestlers that are overrated. Well, we probably won't be able to name you five of each, but Under. we could try and name a few. Cody Rhodes, Wade Barrett. You've definitely got two there. Cesaro. Cesaro, yes, he's underrated, definitely, because you know he's, he's a great performer and he doesn't really get pushed anyway. This one is up and down because he's good, but he's not made it. Dean Ambrose. Yeah, I he's mean, good, I, but not made it. I wouldn't necessarily say he's underrated, but I do know what you mean. Like, he's got a lot of talent. He's been involved in main events, but at the same time, he's just been involved in. He gets involved in a main event, then he's involved in nothing, then he's main event nothing. Yes. So well, over, I mean. Overrated wrestlers? I guess a lot of people are probably saying Roman Reigns. I thought you'd say Cena. Well, Cena, you could say, is overrated. Um, I think some people might think Sheamus is overrated. Yeah. Uh, I think yep. Dolph Ziggler could be seen as overrated. A lot of people would say that. A lot of people. Um, 
any other people you can feel you can think that are slightly even slightly overrated. Some people may think the Miz is overrated, oh, but I think he's yes. slightly underrated. Personally. Sorry, I think he's a bit over. I think his time has come and gone, and I don't think he's can offer the WWE much more anymore. Um, we'll stop there. Yeah, that's fine. We've we've, I was we've gonna, thought of a couple. I was going to do as the I was going to do a jab at Hogan. Oh. <laughs> anyway, um, who in NXT do you feel could be a breakout superstar for the company? Uh, I think it's looking like Finn Balor will be, by the way they're pushing the guy right now, and by the way they're presenting him. It looks like Finn Balor's going to be the next breakout superstar. Whether or not it works, who knows? I mean, Kevin Owens was sort of a breakout superstar from NXT in the way he came into the company. It's kind of been, he's kind of been de devalued a little bit now, but it, Finn Balor looks like the next big thing now, doesn't he? Yeah. Especially yeah. now he's got the NXT Championship. I mean, that's, that's a surefire... That's a surefire thing that you're going to be brought into WWE. I mean, Seth Rollins was NXT champion, got brought in. And Biggie quick, Langston brought in. And a quick uh, guess is that he's not going to. He's going to beat Kevin Owens mm. on the night before SummerSlam. Yes, so he should. Can Dean Ambrose be a main eventer? Here we go. Um, I don't think. I mean, he can be in main events. I don't think he could be like a consistent main eventer. But I do feel he's one of those guys who you could have him in the upper mid card and you could have him lurking around the main event, but still make him feel like he's an important part of the show because of his character, even though he's not in the main event. I think the guy could work mid card, he could work tag team, he can work main event, he can work all over the card, I feel. And I think that's kind of that's what makes him not be a main eventer, in my opinion. I want to agree because Dean Ambrose gets a lot of praise for the work he provides. He put on a great feud with Seth Rollins. And people do want to see the main event of the Triple Threat of the Shield members. But I think Dean Ambrose is a guy who could be thrown into a main event match when and where needed. Yes. But to be up there long term, at this moment in time... Especially now there's only one championship. Like if it was a world heavyweight and a WWE championship, I'd probably say he would be a he could be a world heavyweight champion, True. just not a WWE champion. Yes. On Raw, that, that's 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 what I, that's probably the best way we can use to describe Dean Ambrose's main event career. Really, WWE championship maybe world heavyweight championship yeah because that goes to the B show. What do you think of Axel Mania? I mean, when it first came on the scene, I actually was kind of I actually kind of liked it. <sighs> Well, oh, in, yeah. in the sense that it made the guy stand out a little bit. He actually gave him some mic time and, you know, he actually had some kind of gimmick other than boring ass Curtis Axel. Yeah, it didn't catch on, but at least for some for some while it was somewhat entertaining, even though you can only really do it around WrestleMania time. I find it a real shame. Yes, they had to do kill that Hogan kind of like character for a big reason, but... I don't think the whole Curtis Axel thing. I think it's gonna to have to take a big recreation to make him work again. I just, I just don't, don't like Curtis Axel, uh, Addicts Mania, Hulk Mania, all that jazz. No. Do you like the idea of Sandow and Axel reforming no, as a parody? No, no I, I wasn't a massive fan of that either. I mean, I liked Sandow as like a Macho Man ripoff in a way because I think he could pull it off, but. You know, again, where were you going to go with this? You know, it was never you were never going to make them tag team champions. So at the end of the day, you reformed them, but it was kind of pointless. You know, again, I think Sandow was one of those guys you could push as a singles performer. You had a great chance when he, you know, when he broke up from the Miz after all that great work he did as Damian Mizdow. And you just in true WWE fashion, they fucked it up. This is time. terrible because it's just like I've said this in past Q and A, but I'll say it again. Just like the Alex Riley feud, Miz seems to have been bringing bad luck to his tag team partners. He let down Alex Riley. He didn't really move forward after his feud with the Miz. Uh, Miz Dow, he didn't really move forward. That's why they just bung him into a tag team with someone that I guess wanted to be on TV and they wanted to keep Sandow on. It's a, a big letdown. I don't care they're back together. I don't think they're going to make it far. And if the WWE do push them, I'm still thinking um, Sandow could have been much further than this. 
if the WWE kept the booking going. Anything goes show. Hello. Hello, guys. Well, since we spoke. Will the will the hate for Roman Reigns ever end? No, not for me. I mean, has the has the general reaction in the YWC been a little bit more favourable towards Roman Reigns after WrestleMania? Because I know going into WrestleMania, people hated Roman Reigns. So I'm just wondering how what's the reaction been like since? Because I haven't really been watching. And I'm just curious as to what you what you've seen. My personal thing is it's not changed. I'm still not a fan of Roman. So Reigns. even though he's not out of the main event scene right now, it's still not changed. I still don't buy into Roman Reigns. I still don't care for Roman Reigns. I still want him to somehow do well. Cause I don't want him to be another one one that WWE have let down. But from Twitter, Facebook. He has been getting a somewhat more positive reaction than Super Roman Reigns or childlike Roman Reigns. He has actually been getting more praise. Yeah, I mean, it, it probably won't ever end in the YWC if this is what you're talking about. Simply because, you know, their guys ain't getting pushed and Roman Reigns is just a pretty boy. You can't work in the ring, you know, blah, 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 fucking blah. Um, but I, I mean, it has to end eventually. At some point, they're going to have to just, you know, just get the fact that you know this is the guy that WWE really want to push to the moon, and you're just going to have to fucking deal with it. You know, essentially, at the end of the day, um, do you think we will ever surpass you guys in Q and A videos? Uh, well, we're on Q and A two. I think it's two one seven. Two two eight. Two two. Is it two? I, I, I don't know. I'm 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 losing count. Um, I'll probably go on YouTube in a bit and find out around like Q&A 250 or something. I don't know. I lose count that much. Um, well, we're doing one a week. If you're doing one a week, then unless, you know, unless we stop doing them soon, then you're probably never, ever, ever, ever going to overtake us, I'm afraid. I think you're going to have to do one every day. Answer a question a day or two a day because we have been doing this a long time since we started and we're going to continue, like we say, we keep receiving many, many questions from you awesome people out there, supporters of the British Fist. So more than likely, guys, you're going to have to work a little bit harder. But you don't really want to overdo your Q&A videos because there's something special, you know what I'm saying? Q&A is Q&A 218. I've got, it, I've got the number wrong on it again. There you go. That's just me and my maths. Uh, if, you, if we were to have a tag match, anything goes show WWE versus the British Fist on WWE TV, what would the stipulation be and who would win? Loser leaves YouTube. That, well, we don't really have that much to lose there, so that's good for us. Um, so, yeah, loser you loses, you, loser you, loser goes off YouTube or something To be like honest, that. I don't think that stipulation would be big enough to make fun. To go, no, don't do that! Because we're almost finished anyway. Yeah. We've just got our Q&As going. So that stipulation would, you know, get the crowd going. Okay, um... What what sort of stipulation would get the crowd going there? Like a like a ladder match with like the YouTube Championship on the line or something. I don't know. Maybe Snake Daddy and the rest of them will have a bit of a problem with that. If there was something, if this one was matched, but there was something our side. So you had one stipulation, we had another. Ours would be to end you. You know, scrap your YouTube, and for us. You got to do raw reviews every week. <laughs> that or if, if you beat us. You get all our subscribers. Oh, no, 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 I'm saying if what? they beat us, we have to do raw reviews again. That would be the punishment. I'd really want to fucking kick their ass if the, if we lost enough to do fucking raw reviews. Because I am not doing raw reviews. So again. we beat you, you're finished. Yeah. You beat us, we do raw reviews. Fortunately, this isn't happening. So thank God for that. <laughs> and um, who would win? Us, of course, because we're older than you. With that damn. Good. And we're older, and we're British, so um, we'd be the bad guys. So because we're British, I don't know. Anyway, a couple more questions. We'll just we'll just leave it there because we don't want to get too personal with you guys. But no. yeah, thanks for the questions, guys. Uh, Michael Murray uh, asked us a few more questions. Uh, we'll end on these two. Um, if we were able to see the ratings for NXT, do you think they would be higher than Raw or SmackDown? Personally, I stopped watching Raw and just checking on pay per views as they pretty much tell the build up of what you missed. I really think the NXT writing team need to write Raw as well as get rid of these TV drama writers and focus on wrestling. Um, I could This question I could talk about for a while. Um, I don't think the ratings for NXT are anywhere near Raw or SmackDown because on Raw, 
on Raw um, and SmackDown, they're on big cable channels. Yes. And they're getting 4 million, 3 million viewers a week. Whereas the WWE Network, even if every subscriber watched NXT, there'd suddenly be like a million to a million and a half viewers, which is a lot. But let's face it, not I don't think a massive percentage are watching NXT on the WWE Network. Yes, it's one of the most popular shows, but it's a popular show with the hardcore fans. I think if you showed NXT to casual fans that really gravitate more towards, you know, more edgy storylines and stuff, I'm not sure they would like it because NXT is very, very wrestling orientated. And I think that the reason why they're doing it this way is because they know that's what hardcore fans such as ourselves would prefer to have. So I think this whole idea of you know, NXT is better you know, because there's more wrestling on it, therefore it should get higher ratings, is a bit flawed in my opinion. I do see what you're saying in the sense that I know you, you enjoy the short show more and as do I when I was watching it, but there's a bit of a jump going from NXT, a developmental show where you could take a few more risks. You don't have sponsors, uh, you know, you don't have advertising to satisfy. There's a big jump from that to going to Raw. So really just think about that before you think about the NXT writing team need to write Raw. I mean, the whole, I mean, on TV, you need drama writers because that's what casual fans essentially are going to want to watch. So you've got to really be careful with that, in my opinion. If you um, had a show purely based on wrestling, sorry for interrupting, if you had a show purely based on wrestling, as Vince Russo said, no casual fans would watch. I think that's the first part of the question that is um, about the ratings being better than Raw. But there's the whole theory going around that Triple H eventually will take over, or Stephanie will take over the main mm. show, like more and SmackDown. So eventually, NXT writers or Triple H will be writing for Raw and SmackDown. It's just a waiting game. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think the ratings are going to be anywhere near Raw unless eventually NXT does go to TV, which it won't because they need the network to at least have something special mm. about it. I mean, I think this whole idea of let's get rid of the writers on Raw and just replace them with NXT writers, I think that whole idea is a little bit simplistic. Uh, I think it's a lot more complicated. The NXT writing team, they do tape shows, so they can plan a lot of things in advance and they can, you know, think long term. Whereas the problem in Raw right, and SmackDown right now is that they do shows every week. Raw is live, essentially. They've got to build to pay-per-views and... Things change over time in, you know, in pop culture, in the news, you know, in wrestling, injuries and stuff like that. It's some it's a lot more difficult to write a raw than it is uh, than it is an NXT set tape because you can have a plan going through the taping of four shows, whereas if raw you're live every week and you know, as we know, things change on the dot. So all I'm saying is where I see your point, it it's a little it's a little more complicated than how you're putting it. It's just it's not a case of Let's get rid of the Raw team and bring in the NXT team and it'll be better. No, that's, that's not the case at all because they're two totally different shows. Um, and we'll answer this question too. What faction in the Attitude Era was your favourite? Mine personally was the original McMahon Helmsley era and not this authority BS. Faction in the Attitude Era. We have a lot to choose from. I mean, you could say DX. Yep. I mean, obviously, I think yours yours would be the DX. Yep. Um I always remember Main Street, Main Street Posse. They're always a fucking funny faction. Do you remember the Main Street Posse? I don't think they ever won a match. Which faction in the? Oh yeah, okay. in the Action Era, yeah. Main Street. Oh, flip. They're Main like Street Posse the, were awesome, mate. They were like the uh, Spirit Squad yeah. for the Action Era. But they were funny though. I mean, you had uh, <laughs> you had DX, you had Main Street Posse, you had the Nation of Domination. That was that was a pretty good faction. Um, you had like you said, you had the McMahon Helms, the faction. You had the Ministry. Right to censor. You had the brood. Right to censor. Another, <laughs> another great, another great attitude era, but by far the best one of the attitude. If we're talking WWE, has got to be DX. I think it's hard because they did bring the entertainment. They brought the serious storyline. Yes. They brought everything there, taking nothing away from whoever your favorite may be. But I think it's going to be hard to top what the DX. Brought. Yeah, yeah, the Vince McMahon group before, like, The Rock got involved and stuff. So, uh, Vince McMahon, before he joined force with Triple H, there's stuff there, but DX. 
Indeed. And that is where we're going to end this Q&A. MJ usually do the outros. So, um, yeah, go. From the British Fist Evolution, which is no more, and you look at the original members of uh, British Fist, thank you very much for watching. (laughs) And please, please, please continue to send in your questions in the comment section below. And as you may also see, uh, I'm also re-uploading or re-sharing our old Q&As for you to see how great we were back in the day a couple of years months back anyway thank you very much for watching before we go on any longer because your time is very precious and we value it very much so that's why we're going to keep you here for an extra half an hour not really thank you very much for watching and goodbye